so, but we just stuck to the science, you know what I mean? I, I, on the car, the springs, the setups, the, you know, the ride, the roll, the bump, and, and which Rock out said from the beginning, bump means a shit, rebound is the only thing that counts. You want 76% of the shock control on the front, which means I don't care where you went. You ran two shocks in the rear, I don't care if there were two sixes. And see, they, Patty is forty, would run one, and by the time they gave up, Lord have mercy. So I will usually run four sixes in the back and four eights in the front, so that's 66% automatically. You wow. see what I'm yes, saying? Yes. There's no magic to it, just put them on. It's just numbers. And then the sway bar of the front springs was always 50%. Always no wedge, equal equal weight of the car without the driver in it, no wedge. It was easy, easy to set one up. Just put it on a scale, no wedge. And, 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 and the only thing that was bad about me is if I ever let one down off the jack stands and it was low, I was probably never going to raise it. I just, you just couldn't. <laughs> I mean, that's where it wanted to be. Why was it there if it wasn't one right. one oh, there? Oh, yeah, it settled in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you know, and so, but even on Baker's Dodge, he's 71. We had a deal where you could run around there. You know, all that thing needed was about 135 inches to cool. I mean, but the patties were always on the safe side, so you had to bottom them in the top, mm -hmm. which is a lot of area. So when he got down to right down there to nitty degree, you could run, and Chief changed the front, I says, if you want to pick up, just pull that center hood pin and that door will fall down over the ductwork and all the air that'll come in is only coming in through the bottom. Because mm -hmm. the top would, was automatically, was a door in there and it would just, with either, it would seal this way or seal that way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it was a little bit harder to do the oil cooler, but you could pull a pin there and it was a door that would come across the oil cooler and lock it up. <laughs> so when you got ready to qualify, I said, ain't you going to tape off? I said, no, we'll just leave it. Yeah. Because psychologically, they, they, you know, everybody is putting all this tape and you didn't do anything. And you were blocked off more than they were. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're sitting there wondering, how in the heck are they yeah. getting so this how, how did the 72 season go? Well, by that time, you know, we were we were into the number game pretty hard. That's where we changed the springs at Charlotte and picked up six mile an hour in Australia. And she, well, she was a happy guy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, and look, if if I'm going to explain it in the simplest terms, I can. So, if you got a dump truck and it's got no load in it, it's sitting up here. And so when it leaves, it only squats a very little bit, and then it goes forward. Mm -hmm. You load that truck up, and before it moves forward, it goes down. But whatever the load rate is, well, weak springs in the car does the same thing. When you're in the corner and it's down there, it doesn't go forward until it stops going down, because mm -hmm. it can't go in two directions. You know that what I'm saying? Like that. Well, that's 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 the way. I mean, the simplest way. You know, in Rack Cap, you know, he explained it a little bit different, but we went to Martinsville that time, and that's when I learned that a lot of this shit didn't matter. Because they had no Eel Sophie Castle's wing car down there with a Daytona gear and Daytona tires. And that car ran within two tenths of the best petty setup at Martinsville. Now, I don't, I'm not saying it would have done it all day. Mm -hmm done it good enough to qualify well what you're saying about them springs what little experience i had driving you could go out there and run about 185 miles an hour and the car just felt like it was going to jump around there and as soon as you picked up and taped off and that thing would come down and get them springs down like you're saying oh it would drive like a dream i mean it's just it's and every time it done that if you ain't careful it'd slow down right so that's that's another deal we go to bristol one time and the king says figure me out a setup and i don't know we was already running a monte carlo i think i was already back by that time because after that deal when 73 i i told chief i said if you hire me back i'll never leave and i didn't <laughs> <laughs> but 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 that was the deal there to come to me and they was running a chevrolet monte carlo i, I think it was he said figure me out a spring setup well Aaron Dudley here was working at this time, and he had a lot of information from Childress on what Earnhardt was doing. And not only that, but Rathgab had a lot of information on what Earnhardt was doing. 
Because Earnhardt conversed with Rathgab a lot. Because he'd done some of the testing on the kit car. Years Zach ago. DeMunda. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that, and that when, the they, when they had, had him, inducted him into the Hall of Fame, him being Earnhardt in Talladega, he gave a lot of credit to Rathgab. Oh. Okay. And the Woods Brothers, the same deal. And Ed Howe, the same same. We go to these car shows and stuff, and Ed Howe, you, Rathgab was like the second coming of Christ when he got that Ed Howe booth. You know? No kidding. Yeah. Uh, I know he was popular. Well, because... Harry Hyde loved him. Oh, well, yeah, but Harry would cheat even if it was slowing him down. <laughs> oh, that was just yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I love him. But, 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 yeah, so he come to me and he said, I want you to figure me out a spring setup for Bristol. Sure. Here you go. Do this. And so he did that, and they went there. And now he come back Monday, and he said... How was he? he says the worst driving car I ever drove in my life. It's terrible. And I think he finished third or fourth. I said, well, what's the matter? He says, unless you were in the gas all the time, it was terrible. <laughs> he says, now, if you was in the gas all the time, it was fine. I said, yeah. man, it's Bristol, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. turn the steering. Yeah. Oh, that's that's but awesome. we go to Daytona Beach now. This was after Kyle was driving out. I think we had a GM, had that Pontiac and a GM. They called it a GM10. This is after the, the big Pontiac. And so we're there, and I'm looking at, I, and I'm there with Rathcap. Because they, they, by this time, we were building that car in Detroit that the Petty's contracted to build. Yes, from Rathcap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're down there on this test, and I'm over here, and I'm new to computers and all this shit. So I get all these sheets that NASCAR's got all these corner speeds. So I go home to the motel one night, and I said, I take the best speed in every section and total it up. What's the lap? Of all the drivers, what's the lap? Then I said, okay, who's the next best driver to that deal? And it was KP and whatever, what he was driving. So we liked to look at how he was running because they'd show where you ran on the racetrack. And the king would come off the two and cut down. He said, you're fucking yourself right there. He throwed his goddamn glasses down. Storm. <laughs> God was mad. God. And he come back about 15 minutes later and he said, what do you mean? I said, just try it. Is it going to kill you to try it? And he goes out here and he does it. He says, and it, and it picked up. He says, man, that was a lot better. Because you use that boundary layer off the wall instead of getting away from it. I guess... Now I'm looking at it that way. At that time, did I know that? No. So you remember that 2 plus 2 pig? Mm. See, that's what Ralph got brought in ball. Mm. And we built all those pants. Everything in that car had a radius. Mm -hmm. Every piece of ductwork, everything. All the spoilers and everything, all on a graph. If you do this, you move this one here, you end here. So we, we go down there and we put all that shit in there. Mm. And he goes out and he qualifies, and he comes in. And he was white as a sheep. And he shaking and he said, you son of a bitch, you're trying to kill me. I said, you're seventh. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't make the show. He said, you're seventh. But see, Rathcap had this deal, and you remember God, <coughs> Gordon? Remember Gordon, the goofball with the computer that looked like a pepper shaker that he'd crank it up? What was what it? Was what was it? Uh, he went to work for uh, B&M Hydro in California. He's a Chrysler engineer. Okay. So he, he's the one that did all the load charts, and he's the one that said they took all the deals and said, if you're running Daytona Beach in February and your test earlier, here's the correlation between temperatures, and the, nobody would believe it. Until we went to Talladega with Rathgab, and he took all the qualifying times, and he, we were taking the air, our own temperatures around six spots in the racetrack. He, he was, I was along for the ride. <laughs> and and so he took the, all the qualifying times and he said, here's the guy that's going to pick up six miles an hour. Here's the guy when he runs at this time of the day is going to be on the pole. And he called him. Mark Waltrip picked up speed and, and Mark Martin was on the pole and he picked up six miles an hour. He says, it's just a difference and from what they ran in the morning to what that temperature was on that day. And they could do that all day long. And at That's it, a pretty good cipher, right? Well, they had a correction right. factor for Daytona Beach, just like you had for a dyno. Right. The man, they just sit there and 
zing those numbers out, you know, and I mean, and they, well, you just want the only ones that would pay attention to that. Well, well the, the know, information was there, and you yeah, well, you it. know, they they took the information. It looked like a lie detector only. I think they had seven needles, <laughs> <laughs> and they put this stuff on her, and they had this thing in a dry shaft, and it would it would do that on, on a graph paper, and that thing would sit in the seat, and that thing would would move like a toilet paper roll. <laughs> And at the end of the day, they would take the segments and they could see where the racetrack was and where start. And they'd take the start and finish line on all the sheets, so even though it was a lap, and they'd line them all up and hold them up to a light, one to the other, to see the line difference. Wow. Yeah.